In 2012, Swiss television revealed that Gunvor's headquarters in Geneva had been searched by the police. The reason? Allegations of corruption and bribery in a major oil deal with the Republic of Congo. How did the company react? Did they send a no-comment reply? No, that would be suspicious. Did they let the spokesman make a statement? No, that would be too dangerous. Hey, what about letting your lawyer set the right tone? During our investigation, we were confronted with the gap between the company's public discourse and its actions. The story is quite complex, but Gunvor's communication strategy can be boiled down to three simple rules. Rule number one, only tell the truth when it's useful to you. This is the mother of all strategies. Just one example, while Gunvor was denying that the success could be attributed to powerful Russian connection, even threatening journalists who would suggest such a link, at the same time, company representatives were boasting of this exact connection behind the scene to lay hands on Congolese oil. And man, they were successful. Between 2010 and 2012, Gunvor obtained exclusive access to 22 cargoes of crude, making big profits out of them. Communicating when everything goes according to plan is simply great. But what additional measures did Gunvor take when everything turned out badly? That leads me to rule number two. Put the blame on a single employee. Question about the final destination of the fat commissions that had been paid to door openers. Gunvor accused a crooked employee of masterminding the illicit scheme. But seriously, how could a single guy who didn't have the power of signature at the time transfer some $30 million without his bosses knowing? To answer that good question, Gunvor went back to rule number one. Rule number three, use promising words like high compliance system. This is a move that doesn't require much. Take it to hands and type those words in an email and send to the press or to anyone doubting your crooked employee theory or the legality of your business practices. Public Eye addressed a list of questions to Gunvor. How did the Swiss company react? They explained that since the matter arose five years ago, the company has made extensive strides to enhance and improve its compliance system. That sounds great on paper, but hey, sorry, doesn't hold to the facts. Our investigation shows that Gunvor took very high risk to get back in the game in Congo and didn't even hesitate to enlist the service of a very dubious character involved in several criminal proceedings. A secret video from 2014 even shows one of the company's high-ranking employees attempting to bribe its way back into the Congolese market. So what to do now that a Swiss NGO has revealed that the dubious practices have continued long after the scapegoat left the stage? Well, rule number one and number three will still be useful, of course. And number two is such a convenient one, also with prosecutors, that you can be sure that Gunvor may draw it out again with a new guilty man in Congo. Thanks for listening. This lesson in bad communication has been unwillingly provided to you by Gunvor.